Now let's delve into a few of the fresh features in closer detail. When you launch Vistature, the first thing you'll notice is the UI makeover. To enhance navigation, we've made a significant change to the Resources tab. It's now oriented vertically. This layout makes it effortless to locate all the different sections in the revamped menu, including 2D, params, 3D, materials, and libraries. We've incorporated some subtle but impactful enhancements to boost visibility and overall performance of your digital design workflow. In this version, we've upgraded the existing Unreal Engine, and for our Mac users, we're thrilled to announce the native support for Apple Silicon. Another noteworthy improvement is a significantly accelerated GPU rendering speed, especially when working with V-Ray 5. For further details regarding these upgrades, please refer to the Browser Help Center. Now let's kick off our first demo by downloading a new fabric for the vest pockets and assign it to the garment. To make the pockets seem more realistic, let's edit the stitch construction of the edges. In this edition, fashion designers can be even more creative with the upgraded stitch construction tool. This provides more flexibility and options for visualization of the stitches and puckering. For ultra-realistic rendered images when showcasing to merchandisers, to reviewing collections with the rest of the team. Now you can find new options for each stitching technique. There are new sliders for washes and puckering to give you even more control over the look of the seam. We've also added new puckering presets, like cotton, denim, and puffy. These presets are a good starting point when experimenting with different looks. For this garment, we'll use cotton preset and change the properties according to the required design. There is also a Use Displacement checkbox, which gives you the option to use it or not. We have also added a new option to copy the stitch construction setting from one edge to another. Let's apply the same settings to the flaps and pocket straps. This feature allows you to also copy the setting across different BW files. Now, let's put the hood up. Before doing so, let's open the avatar parameters. Under measurements, there are new checkboxes, allowing you to remove hair and ear covers when editing the avatar. For fashion designers, this will make styling the garment even easier. Technical designers can also use this feature to improve the fit and shape of the simulated hood, especially for female avatars like Olivia, who has her hair up in a bun. Great! Before walking you through the next features, let's save a snapshot with the hood when it's up, and match the pocket color with the rest of the outfit. For the next step of our demo, we're excited to walk you through some of our latest lighting updates, providing apparel merchandisers with immersive and customized experience. First, let's take a quick look at the existing lighting option, the HDRI. You can find it under the 3D and Lights tab in the Vertical Resource tab. In this edition, we've added the Link HDRI to Camera checkbox. When the checkbox is enabled, the HDRI works the same as before. However, when HDRI is unlinked to the camera, the HDRI is stationary while the camera view is changing. This improves the 3D orientation, representing the light in a realistic way in real time. The second lighting upgrade is parametric lights. These give you the ability to create custom lighting that will improve the overall look of the rendered output. This is particularly useful when using your 3D garments for B2B and e-commerce selling. Parametric lights give you even more flexibility, reducing dependency on HDRI lighting and speed up the rendering process as they require less computing power for Unreal Engine than HDRI. There are four different types of lighting options that you can add to the 3D scene. Area light, spotlight, directional light, and point light. Each of these lights illuminate the scene differently and have slightly different settings. Let's look at some examples. We'll start with an area light. We'll use a gizmo to change its location, rotation, and scale. We'll disable the HDRI from the view to see the area light better. The area light is a light that casts directional light rays from within a set boundary. You can also find these settings in the context view and use the sliders to adjust the light.
In the context menu, you can also check whether the light should cast a shadow and if the light should be visible in the 3D space. Now let's add a directional light. A directional light mimics the lighting that you would get from the sun. Directional lights emit parallel light rays in a single direction, but the light reaches out into infinity. We'll disable the area light and get a clear view of the directional light in action and adjust its properties. Finally, we'll add another area light and place it behind the avatar. We'll adjust its size, color, and distance to which the light is emitted to get a nice backlight. As before, we'll dim the other lights in order to see the full effect of the background light. The ability to change a light's color opens a wide variety for creativity in creating a 3D environment. Let's bring the other two lights back and hide the 3D objects from the scene. This looks great. Let's save a preset so that we can use it for other scenes or export it and share with other browser users. Now let's delete the lights from the scene and prepare a new lighting setup. This time we'll add a spotlight and place it above the avatar. We'll tweak the intensity, angle, and fall off settings to get a staged look. Next, we'll add two point lights, each in different color, to give the scene a bit of a club mood. A point light is very similar to an incandescent light bulb that emits light in all directions. You can think of a point light as a sphere of light filling an area. Objects closer to the light will be brighter, and objects further away will be darker. Point lights are great when you need to illuminate areas with a smooth fall off in all directions, or create a light that has a single point as its source, like a lamp or candle. Let's save this preset and delete the lights from the scene before moving on to the last example. For our last setup, we'll combine the HDRI with the parametric lights. First, we'll dim the HDRI. The lower value gives us a nice base with realistic lights and shadows in our scene. Next, we'll add an area light and a point light to highlight details on our outfit and to create a mood we want to in our scene. Let's save this last scene and toggle between the save presets. We'll disable the 3D light objects from our scene before switching to the 3D review workspace. Here, we'll load the ready snapshots we have of Oliver and Olivia and see them side by side. As you can see, the lighting is consistent across various workspaces.